In this last boot camp video for Lua, we're going to take a look at uh, if then blocks and uh, for loops. And that doesn't mean the number four, it's like F O R, for, well, I'll get into it in a minute. But basically, a loop is just what it sounds like it loops over some code. So if you want to do some code five times, you do a for loop five times. And so you don't write five chunks of code, you write one chunk of code and loop it. Cool. And the if then thing basically is kind of like if you have money, then you can go to the store. It's a logical thing. So we're going to use our people table that we created in the last video. And let's go ahead and just loop over that and print out all the names. Uh, we could we could do we could do this. We could do um, print people one dot name. And we could copy that and print people to dot name and so on and so forth. Well, like I said, we don't really want to do that. So let's create a for loop. And in Lua, this is the syntax uh, for just a, a plain old for loop for index equals one, two, four, because we have four things there, do. And so what are we going to do? We're going to do the next stuff here. We're going to do all of the code until we get to the next end statement. Two things here. First of all is this is a variable and you can name it anything you want. You can name it foo. For foo equals one, you just know that this variable here starts out equaling one. The first time through this loop, foo equals one. The next time through the loop, foo equals two, all the way up until it gets to whatever the top number is. So to use that, we were doing people one, people two, people three. Well, if foo equals one the first time, then we can do this people foo dot name, uh, and it's going to print whatever is it people one dot name. The next time through the loop, foo equals what? It equals two. So this is going to be people two dot name, people three dot name, people four dot name. And to prove it to you, let's go ahead and run this. And it prints out the names just like that. So we can do index is kind of a typical uh, name for a for loop index. Let's run that exactly the same thing. Let's here we'll clear this me so that to know that really there we go. Okay, um, x is also another one that people use a lot. I a lot of times uh, for a loop that you just use a single variable, a, si a single letter variable. Uh, I is probably you know I or x is probably the the most common ones, but whatever you use, it's going to equal one the first time through, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to point out was this is the variable that you're creating, and then you use it inside the loop, first time through it's set to one, and so on. Okay, uh, this one, this is how far up it goes, and we know that there's four things in this table, but what if we don't know that there are four elements in this table? Ah, there's a really cool thing you can do here in Lua. Pound sign people. And that gives us, what that does is it says, what is the length of people? And in this case, since people is a table, that that how long is it means how many elements are there in people. So let me erase this, run it again. It's going to do exactly the same thing because it's just, it's saying the first time through I is going to equal one. The next time through I is going to equal two. Uh, and it's going to do it all the way up to however many elements there are in the people table. Okay, so that that's kind of cool, isn't it? So that that's a for loop. Uh, and if you wanted to do for i equals one to nine nine nine, you do that and get an error. Why do you get an error? Well, because the fourth time through this equals people four dot name, which is still cool. The fifth time through it's people five dot name, and there is no there is no fifth element in P in the people table, uh, so you so you do get an error. That's why doing something like this is cool because then you don't have to keep track of how many elements are there. You don't you don't need to know because this can this can look for you and and use it. All right, so there's there's an example of a for loop. Let me show you an an if then kind of thing, and let's create a function called local function get age, and we'll pass it in a name. And let's create a variable called result. So result's going to be 
a result and we're going to pass this back. We're going to pass it out. So we're going to pass something into this function and we're going to pass something back out of it after if we've messed with it. And local result, we will actually uh, set this to, let's see, not found. Just a little message here. And now we're going to do, we're going to do a loop. And so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this here. Okay, for i equals one, and we'll do however many things there are there. And now this is where the if thing comes in. What we're doing here is we're going to loop through all the people, and we're going to look for the name that we're passing in. So we're going to pass in a name, and we need to look through the people elements and find out is this does this record have the name whatever we pass in. So if n, and that's the name we passed in equals, and I'll get back to the double equal sign in a minute, this is not just a one equal sign. If n equals people i dot name, then result equals people i dot age. And then we do an end to get rid of that, uh, to, uh, to, to close out the if, get rid of that thing, and we do an end to close out uh, the for loop, and then we do an end to close out the function. Okay, so the way this is going to work is we come in here, here's the beginning of our loop, and that's going to loop, it's going to loop four times, okay, and it's going to, it's going to run this code four times. The first time through, i is going to equal one, then it'll equal two, it'll equal three, it'll equal four. Okay, so we just check and see, is n, the name we passed in, is that equal to this element name? If it is, then we set the result variable to that, that same record's age. All right, now the, the, this thing here, so that bites people sometimes, because if we're doing a variable called local age equals get age j, we're only use a, a single equal sign there. The, the difference is this is an assignment operator. It assigns the value of this to this thing here. And this is an equality operator. It's saying, does whatever is on this side uh, equal whatever is on this side? Okay. So just kind of this, this thing, this will bite you over and over again. It, it still hits me after 25 years of, of programming. Not as often as it, as it used to, but um, anyway, so that's, that's what that does. And so this is our function. Uh, it has a loop, has an if inside of the loop. So let's go ahead and try it out. And let's say local age equals get age. And we're passing in the name J. And then we will go ahead and print age. And so this should, let's go ahead and erase this here. Let's run this. Oh, what did I do? I have a, uh, I have a bug. Okay, it's our, our, first, our first chance at debugging. Okay, so what we're doing here is um, we're running through the loop four times. That's cool. We're checking to see if n is people. Okay, here's the things you, things you do to check. Um, are we using the correct variable? And this is our variable i. We're using it here. We're using it here. Okay, that's good. And I just realized what the problem is. We're passing in the name. We're supposed to pass back the result. We haven't passed it back yet. So after the end of the for loop, we'll do return result. Okay, that this is going to work now. If it wasn't such a good opportunity to uh, show you uh, kind of what, what you can do for debugging, I would be embarrassed, but I've gotten over that in 25 years of programming. We run and we get that. Okay, so we look and see how old is Tom? We get 18. How old is Sally? Ooh, not found. And that's why I put in up here kind of a default message. Uh, so in this in this routine here, if you pass in a name it doesn't know that it can't find, it's not gonna not gonna bomb out. It's still gonna give you something. So there's a, a quick look at uh, if then blocks at a for loop, sometimes called a for next loop. 
um, because in, in a lot of programming languages, instead of it ending with an end, it ends with a next. Go do the next loop. Uh, uh, Lua is nice in that all of these things end with end, so it's kind of standardized there. So as we get into the code for the program, for, for the game, you'll see a lot of, a lot of loops. You'll see, you'll see using if then an awful lot. Because there's a lot of times when you want to do something if something else has happened or hasn't happened yet. So that's it for our Lua Bootcamp. But let's go ahead and in the very next video, let's dive into starting to code an actual game using Lua and Corona SDK.